Hey folks, it's Fritzcar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. I'm just going to take this little load of timber over to the mill so that we can get ourselves a wee bit of cash just to keep us going. And then once that's done, uh, there isn't really a great deal more of anything that we want to do. Now, we do have to be careful getting around that corner now, don't we? Because of the crops and everything, and the fact that we've got crop destruction on, we cannot go driving on the crop at all. So we've got to be very careful going around the corner right there with our loads, because otherwise, you know, bad things will happen and we don't really want them to. So let's bring that bad boy on in there. Um, I've got a couple of extra mods. Well, there's one mod that I've already had on here. But there's another one that I've been looking at, and I think it would fit this series fairly well. I'm not 100% sure, so I'd like your opinions. And I'm going to, so I, I'll ask you this week, I'm not setting it up as one of the, you know, the, the poll questions. I'm just going to ask you to respond in the comment section. Give me your opinions this week on these two mods. Let's just bring this over and stop right there. About there, isn't it, for this one? And we'll undo that, and then we'll come over here and sell, and then we've got to do that, and we've got to get that one knocked off of there. There we go. Fortunately, it was a small ish one. Right, so we got just over 30 grand for that little lot. These mods in here, under the global company. We've got the hay dryer, which requires wood chips to be able to use, but that could be an interesting way for us to get some hay. And then you've got the cattle feed mixer over here. Um, that could be an interesting way for us to get silage, uh, to, to do the mixed feed, rather than having to use um, the alternatives, which is uh, trailed wagons and stuff, and then constantly loading up the bales and everything. And, yeah, loading up the bales is great and all, but it does take a little bit of time to go and do that. And so that mod, I thought, might be a little bit quicker. So get into the comment section and tell me your thoughts and feelings on using those global mod company um, mods this time. We'll see what we can do. I, I, might, be able to, I might be able to use them. Might not. Um, it... I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that we're, we're definitely going to use them, but what I'm saying is that I think it could be a good idea, and it's definitely something that we want to consider. Now, we've got $32,000 at the moment. I'll bring this one in around here like this. There we go. So that one's done, and I'm going to bring you... I'm just going to put you over to this side slightly. You can stop right there. And let's take a look at our field. I can't remember now what we still need to do. We've got full fertilizer on there and full fertilizer up on there. So we don't need any of that. Uh, it doesn't need plowing. It doesn't need fertilizing. We've done the spraying. So we've essentially done everything that we need to do. There's a couple little spots here for where it needs the weed. Um treatment but there's, there's no point whatsoever in actually doing that it's not going to be beneficial let's jump onto you now what I'm going to do next I'm going to lower that one down didn't we clean that one off like we literally just cleaned that one off and now look at it it's absolutely disgusting uh, there is one thing I wanted to go and check I know that we got a little bit of wool over here we have got some. We've got 10,000 litres right there. There's only one. We do need to clean the sheep up. But, yeah, the, the next big thing that we want to do, and we want to do it pretty quickly, is we need to get new space for the sheep. You know, in the morning, we're going to have 74 sheep. We're, it, it's getting closer and closer to the point where we've got to have a new cattle pen. So we've got to be able to move these sheep around. We've got to be able to do things with them. Um, we've still got to wait for the next harvest to be available so that we can go and get started on that. That's going to take a minute or two. It's going to take a little while to actually get the harvest going. Um, we're going to want some more money before we can do anything with it. So all of this, it's like all of these things, they take time. It's, it's not going to be a particularly quick thing to go and do. And we've got to plan out where we can get our sheep. 
and also plan out where the next station, uh, where the next sheep pen is going to be. Now, I said before, uh, when I asked the question about what the main aim of the map is, um, the result was that we would do a pen of each. It would be one large pen of each type of animal. And I did ask if you wanted me to do two large pens of chickens and two large pens of sheep, and then one each of the cattle and the pigs, and, every, and the actual result of the question was no, just one large pen of each. However, I did say that I'm not going to rule out doing something. Because some people have said, well, I thought we were supposed to be having two pens of sheep. And that's because I said myself I would like to do two large pens of sheep and two large pens of chickens purely because it's quite easy. Once you get the pallets, you get them going, it's actually quite easy just to run it um, using the, the sheep... Um, using the pallets and everything it's it's not difficult at all to do that so I, that's that's kind of where that's come from i think but yeah i do plan to have two large pens of sheep two large pens of chickens if we can and then do other things afterwards so let's back you in here in a little bit further there we go right and now i'm stuck all right let's um tab out and we can do it like that instead i'll put a little bit of water in for the sheep we don't need very much they're mostly done and it's about it really i think we ought to start fast forwarding time we'll, we'll go to 120 times i'm gonna get the stump grinder onto this tractor and we 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 will probably do a little bit of we'll go around and do a little bit of stump grinding we've got some we can do over there and we've got some we can do up on the hill but Really, I want to be fast-forwarding time now and getting to the next harvest. That's, that's kind of our next big thing that we want to do. So I've got you there. You're ready to roll. I'm just going to bring you over to here a minute. I'm going to stop you there, and then I'm going to wait until nightfall. Now, I know I don't normally skip anything out, but I needed a, a drink and a, and a cough and a splutter in a bit. Uh, so I, I, I thought it might be best... So there we go, we've skipped the night, now I will go over here and we will have our 11 hours of sleep, like that, skip through the night, we lose 7 grand in loan interest, and we're going to need to start paying off our loan, I know that several of you have said that we need to start looking at paying off our loan, it's, it's, it's definitely got to be high on our list of things to do. And I like how fast the wool is now being produced. We're also producing quite a bit of grass over here. We've got 74 sheep with another one being produced by the end of the day, which is going to make 75. So this time tomorrow morning, we're going to have 76 sheep. We've really got to start doing something about these sheep, right? The, the, the pen of sheep is definitely high on the to-do list. And if we have a look in here with our actual growth stage, we're on... We're on that one, right? So it's another 24 hours before that crop is ready, which means that we've got 76 sheep in that pen before we start doing the harvest, which means that we need another sheep pen. We, we need to get one ready pretty quick. We've got two lots of wool right there that we can sell if we want to, if we've got the money for it. That's worth about 20 grand, except that the money is pitiful at the moment, and so is the money on silage. It's not very good. The money for straw has gone up a bit, but money for silage is way down, too low, and money for... Um, but then, the silage doesn't matter. We won't be doing that until we start our harvest over there. Um, so, we'll, we'll do both of them together. We'll go and pick that lot up there. Like that. So there's 267 litres to go in for the grass. Keep the sheep happy for just a minute. There we go. And let's have a look at you. We'll drop in a bale. I don't know if I got room. Hang on, let's see. 17,000, that's about half. Yes, we've got room for two bales. So we'll put two bales in for the sheep here. And we'll do that. I'm just wondering if I should cut down another pen, uh, another pen, another load of hay, or if I should just fast forward time, I should probably have had the back weight on the tractor to do this, um, 
yeah, should I cut down more trees or should I just leave that and not worry about it for a minute? Right, we drop that one down there and that one in there as well. That's going to keep the sheep nice and happy there with 33, 34,000 litres. And, yep, yeah, everything's tickety-boo in there for the sheep. We're going to need to cut more trees down down here. I wonder if we should do it, or if, no, we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna get to the harvest. But the harvest is the next thing that I want to do. I want to I want to get to that harvest, and I actually want to start it. So I'm gonna fast forward time, like this. I'll bring you in a bit. Drop you down there, like that, and we we'll go and get this one. We will go and trim off some of the tree stumps. We'll do that over by the sheep pen first, and then we will go up onto the hill and do some up there. Um. We're going to want to be able to sell some crops. We're going to want to be able to sell as much as we can so that we can buy the next sheep pen. So it's it's something that we need to be able to do soon. It's going to cost us 180 grand to be able to do that. And we're also going to need to buy a, a animal transport as well. Because we've got to be able to move the sheep from one pen to the next pen... Uh, so that we can keep seeding them. So I, I don't want to be buying in more animals. The only way that we can buy more animals is to buy them direct into each pen. Uh, so we don't need an animal transport to do that, but that costs us quite a lot of money. If we've got an animal transport, once we've got one pen, we can then move the animals from one to the next. Or at least we can with the sheep, and we can with any other animals if we have more than one pen. Although we won't for the pigs and the cows, I don't imagine. Um... We will just leave them as they are. Cows are something that we will be able to start on soon. We know this. We've got grass available, although we're going to wait until we've got the next field finished before we start working on the cows. Um, that way we'll have a reasonable amount of grass that we can get to. And, um, well, straw doesn't really matter quite so much. You know, we, we've got straw, but we, it's, we don't need any grain or anything for the cows. So we're not going to have to worry about that bit. That bit is not going to be important. Now, let's bring that one back down onto there and remove that bit. Then, right, there's a couple of stumps over there. That's about it, really. There aren't many more, not after these. Just take those out there. And then I've got a couple over this side. And, yeah, that is a, just about everything, I think. It's definitely not enough room here to be able to go and put down the next sheep pen, though. Well, I don't think it is. Let's trim you down. Like that. Okay, that's looking good. And I'll switch you off. Yeah, there's, there's no more tree stumps here, is there? I think I've gotten all of them now. There's everything around there. Yeah, okay, I've got all of those, so we can start heading up the hill... Do a few up there. I'll just go along the grass along here. Just as quick to do it this way. And start looking for the stumps over here. There's a couple. Okay, there's lots of stuff. I thought I already I thought that I came up and I got some of these tree stumps. I really did. I, I genuinely thought that I'd already come over and gotten a load of these. Apparently I didn't. Apparently I must have imaginated that and didn't get any of them at all. Go up there to you. Pick that one out. I really, really hope that the new design that I've done for this stump grinder does actually remove all the stumps properly right down under the map where they're supposed to so that I don't have any issues. Because that's the biggest complaint that I've got with any kind of um, forestry map is the fact that the stumps don't always get taken out. It doesn't matter what stump grinder you use. Uh, I have... I adjusted this one to some rather ridiculous levels in order to stop it from leaving little bits behind underneath the map and you wouldn't have thought that would cause any problem but it does because the hired help this is for those of you who've not been watching the whole series who've just sort of joined us later in the series the hired help if you don't remove the stumps completely if you remove them on the surface occasionally a stump grinder won't remove everything down under the ground um, and the hired help sees that and thinks it's a tree that's sticking up 
and so won't drive over it. So you end up with the hired help doing some very weird things in the field when it shouldn't be because there's no stump visible. But it, you know, as far as the hired help is concerned, there is a stump vi uh, visible. It's hidden from our site. It's down underneath the map. Um, my single greatest complaint with having with this map so far, and I, from what I can see, it's something that does happen on a lot of forestry maps. If you're trying to convert into farmland um, unless every single individual tree has been placed perfectly it's going to you're going to end up with some that don't quite do it properly when when you're trying to remove these stumps and it does make life difficult yes you can use the landscaping tool now to try and get rid of some of them but that costs a pile of money it really does we, we tried to do that and it cost us an absolute fortune so wasn't worth it definitely wasn't worth it it cost us an arm and a leg it was ridiculous now let's just bring that bit over there take that one out and there's more up there but i'm going to leave them because it's almost actually no i'm not going to leave them not yet i'm gonna go up there well yes i am i'm gonna leave them because it's almost night time now so we'll come back down here the crop should be ready in the morning to go and start combining, and that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to just get on with the combining. Let's check our prices a second. How are we doing? Milk has gone way up. Silage has just started to go up. Wool is up now. It's at a good price. How much have we got in the way of wool? How much do we have over here? I'm going to be using the trailer to move the wool sort of from now on. Because we have done it a bit with uh, messing around with the front loader. But it just takes so long to do it. And I've done it several times now. So I'm not really going to bother with that. I'll just auto load the, the wool pallets onto the trailer. And the crop is there ready. So we sleep for 11 hours. We've now got the crop ready. We will just tidy up the sheep in the morning. And then we can get going. We can immediately start on the combining. There it is. It's all ready to go. We've got on five times speed at the moment, which I will leave it on until great demand at the universal selling point. Now, the wool is just now starting to drop. Silage is stopped at 297, which is disappointing. I'd like it to go higher than that. Straw is down. We're not selling anything yet. And we're going, oh, there, that's the great demand. Sunflowers. This is way down. I'm looking at these prices and I'm thinking that a good price is going to be 550 for these two. All right, if we get 550 on those two, that would be a good price. Um, I don't think we can expect much higher than that. But we'll, So we'll say 550 is a good price. And sheep, 76 sheep. We get another one in 13 hours. If we're not selling anything today, because all the prices are currently too low, and that includes, I mean, the wool, the wool is borderline. The wool is definitely borderline, but we've got enough space in the wool pallets right there that we can leave it for another cycle so that we can make sure that we get, get that when that's right up on top. So I'm, I'm quite happy to just leave the wool for a minute. Scoop that lot up. Now, I've done two rounds of barley over in our field over there. So, we're going to want to do something else other than barley this time round. Um, to sort of see what we, you know, see what the good price is going to be. Um, okay, sorry. I, was, I, I thought I wrote down the name of the person who gave us the estimate on the amount of barley that we're going to get this time. Apparently, I didn't write it down. I thought I was going to write it down. I thought it'd be a good idea if I wrote his name down because, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we need to acknowledge that, and I didn't. I didn't write his name down. So I'm really sorry about that. I haven't written your name down, and I should have done, um, and, and I didn't. Um, but, yeah, he said it's 80-some-odd eight, thousand, and the calculations were all there. They were all good. We've got that is ready to go because it doesn't matter what stage, what harvest stage this is at, the, the arable crops, it makes no difference. This up here, however, that we do, we need on the dark, or, well, it's actually the middle orange. As long as it's on that one, then the grass is ready to go. So we've got that ready to go as well. 
So we're going to get, I'm going to get going with the combine first. And this is maximum yield. Now he said, we, at the moment we got 50 odd thousand. And he said that we're going to end, we got 58,337. He said we're going to end up with 80, I think it was 83,000 in total. So that's our new total that we're going to get. Right, I'm going to put that one up there. That's fully extended out. We're ready to go. I'm going to bring you up here, and I just want to make sure that we've got this. We don't want to be up and down. We want to be going around in a circle, and we want to go that way. Everything is ready to go. So we're going to bring you up here, like this. And I'm going to just start like that. It's going to calculate the field. And then it's going to start. And we are away. Ladies and gentlemen, we're away on our next harvest. And across the top, just on this bit here, we reached 4% on our tank. Which... I think is an indication that we have got a fair harvest ahead of us. We've got a lot of grain ahead of us. Now, I do have the crop destruction turned on. And i got to make sure that I follow the combine properly and make sure that we get the stuff unloaded properly before it turns around. Or I've got to jump onto the combine and move it back out. Uh, rather than driving over the crop and stuff like that. Because we're supposed to be playing at least reasonably realistically on this. And yeah, I do accept that. I hadn't been doing that. And I was sort of cutting corners. But And even though most people said they didn't care about that. Um, it is supposed to be a reasonably realistic series. So I am going to do that bit. Um, I do sometimes go with the minority v vote rather than the majority. I've explained this many times before. And... I will probably say it again at some point, but I'm going to say it right now. The, ma the minority won this time. Not because I just decided to go with the minority, but because they had convincing arguments, is what it was. It was convincing arguments that won me over. Now, I'm going to get this going. We're going to go with this bit over here. And I have been told that this is an unrealistic approach to doing the baling, doing the silage. This I would disagree with. I would strongly disagree that this is an unrealistic approach. Yes, it's not the normal approach of doing it. And it is it is unusual, but it's not unrealistic, and I have seen it being done. I've definitely seen this being done in places before. Now, I'm going to, with the first bale that comes out is obviously going to end up being straw. Um, but after that, it should be all right. We're going to have to just watch that little bit there once we get round with our combine. Uh, because it's going to go a bit weird with the hired help moving out on there. So I'm going to leave that one there a second. And I'm going to jump over to the next tractor, which is here. We need to get our trailer on. And we need to go and unload that combine down there. Now, we need to make a note of... Have I written it down somewhere? I need to make sure that I've written down how much grain we've got before we start. So that we can do a direct comparison of the yields. So, let I me mean, just check a minute. If I... I have... I've already got it written down. 58,337. Yes. Okay, so I've already got that written down. So we can now add it to our total without any concerns whatsoever. Let's go racing up this way, being careful not to drive on the crop. Very important that we don't drive on the crop. That combine has now filled up to the brim. Just there. Helper J has a full grain tank. Don't worry, Helper J. Frithgar is on the case. He is going to rescue everything. Now, uh... The thing I want to do, I just want to go back over this way and I want to see what happened with the road sign. You try to go right, no, it just went straight over the top of it. That's fine, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine, it's just gone straight over the top of that. Um, I'd rather not have the road signs, to be honest. I'd rather go, get rid of them altogether, I think it would just make our lives a little bit easier on here. Um, but that being said, it's, it's not the end of the world having them there, is it? We, we, we can sort of work around that bit. Now, 
He's going to back up a little bit like he normally does, and then he's going to get started. And we got to try and stay alongside him as he goes in around this corner. Which might be easier said than done. It's always a little bit tricky going around the corner with them. I'm confident that we can mostly do it. Yes, we can. We can mostly do it. He's probably going to try and turn on this corner here. He's, he's probably going to... He's not going to just flow right round the... No, there he is. He's, he's going to go out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to let him do his turn. And then we're going to follow him round. Now, when you've got crop destruction on, the AI vehicle extension doesn't destroy crop when it's going out round. So if it's doing any turning... It won't destroy the crop as it goes out round, which is a, a really good thing. And I'm going to follow the combine all the way up through here. We're going to keep unloading all the way down. And I'm, I'm just going to stay with it right down to the other end. And then this way, it should go round the big boulder on the inside without causing us any problems. At least that's what I'm hoping. Um, I've just got to sort of sit with it like this. I mean, we've got 64%, well, 63, now 64%, uh, percent in the trailer already, and that's just from one load. I mean, yeah, it's because we've been riding along beside the combine, but you, you get the idea. We, we, we've got rather a lot of grain coming into this thing. Right, you're going to go there, and then you're going to back round. That should be able to go all the way through. So I'm going to go and tip this to our first load off of the field. And then we're going to have to come back and we're going to have to just nurse the combine around there. We won't get started on the cutting of the grass just yet. Uh, we will leave that just for a minute. So I'm going to bring you over to there and I'm going to tip you out like that. So there's our first load being tipped. Looking good. And then I'm just going to switch that one off right there a minute. And I'm going to bring this one back. So we are on with the harvest. I just want to get this one around that corner over there because that's the bit. It cuts in too tight on that. We know that with the vehicle extension. It cuts too tight on um, in sort of inside corners. I, I refer, th those are like inside corners and those are outside corners over there. If it's got an inside corner, it does tend to try and cut across it. Sometimes it doesn't work out very well, like right now. It's going to do that, and then it's going to hit that stone, which we really don't want it to do. Back round. See, I've gone and driven over a little tiny bit of the crop there. It's not going to be the end of the world, I don't think. Then I bring that in round like that, and if I press H now... It will just follow that line. And it should be able to do the rest of it. I think. It's not going to go driving down over the bank, I don't think. No. See, the bit of the bank over this side doesn't really matter. That's fine. Although I will put something on there a little bit away from the edge of the field. It's that bit up there that we want to do something with. So that I'm not tempted to drive down over it with the tractors. Although we're going to be putting a track all the way up from the edge of the field. So we've got a little bit of work that we want to do around the edges of this field. And if you look right there, see? Because it's using hired help, it didn't damage the crop when it went in there. At least I hope it didn't. I don't think it did. No. No, it didn't. Um, yeah, we're going to be building a road that goes all the way up along that end there. It's another thing that we've got to work on. That one's going to come back there. Now, it's down this end here going to drive all the way down here but then when it gets down to the end we've got that little sort of kink bit that steps out and that's the bit that we need to watch I could go and get the tractor and go running up here but I'd like to just stick with this one a second get down to that bit so that I can tidy it up because otherwise the AI vehicle extension is just going to go it's, it's going to twist out and it's going to try and get that bit and it will keep doing that and it kind of messes up. It did it last time. We remember it doing it last time. And I really don't want it to do that. So if I just wait until it gets to here. We've got an early full grain tank. As soon as it starts to try and turn. There. Back up. 
back up. Don't accidentally go too far. And then I will manually go through that bit there. And then I will bring that back like that. And I will go over here and hopefully I can get that bit there. There we go. Right. Now I've gathered everything. Then I can bring this back over this side. Like this. What I did last time with the baler. Right, just put that one. I was I went and gathered up this straw along this edge so that I could turn properly on the lower end there without um, gathering in straw and accidentally um, like triggering a, a bale. But I'm not going to do that this time. I go over. You know, I should have gone the other way, shouldn't I? Right. Yeah, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to take a few passes along the bottom end of the field down there. And that way I'm not going to have to worry about the straw. Although what I was thinking was we've got half a bale of straw in there. So it probably wouldn't be a bad thing for me to go and gather up at least some of the straw. Just along this bottom end. Just to make that bale. Just to complete that bale before I start doing anything else. And I've got two passes along here with the combine. I could go and take those two passes. I've just gone and ripped the spout off the combine with my tractor. It's probably not the best thing to go and do, really. That's, that's not the way to behave. All right? When, when you approach the combine, you don't really want to sweep the spout off with the tractor because, yeah, that's, that's, that's generally frowned upon. Most people were generally frowned upon such behavior. Now, you get to there. Are you, You're just going to stop and you're going to unload. That's good. I actually want you to do that this time. Yeah. I'll let that one unload completely. And then that combine can carry on up that way. I'll move this tractor a little bit out of the way as soon as we've finished unloading. There we go. Right, we've now finished unloading. I'll move you down over here. So that you're out of the way. You can stop right there. And then we'll go to this one. And we will go and... We so we will make a bale... In that baler, we'll get that one complete. So I'll get that to, like, 7995 or whatever. And then I'll go and take a little tiny bit of grass and that will just complete it. But we'll have gotten rid of some of the straw out of the way. And we're not crossing things over. And that's, that's kind of what I want. I don't really want to cheat going in between the two different products. There's no way to empty out the baler without resetting it all the way back to the shop, which I don't really want to do. It's the only way that you can empty out a baler is reset it. And that disappoints me. I'd like that. It, is there a mod? Does anybody know of a mod anywhere where you can empty out the baler and have a part bale come out just to finish it off? That would be very, very cool. Even if we held it in the baler and then we dumped it out when we started our next crop or something like that so that we... Um, it, it can be there and bailed up into the next lot. Um, so if there's any mods like that, let me know. I would really like to take a look at them. Anyway, I have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.